Hello, we are Team Resilience. We are Will Sharperson, Nicholas Busby and Vicky Perkins and we were taking on Challenge 3A provided by TfL. TfL want to be able to make informed and forward-thinking decisions on infrastructure resilience. As such, their challenge required us to assess the climate resilience of their assets, considering what data would be relevant and how it could be captured and processed to help inform TfL's decision making. The challenge had a wide scope and we knew that to provide a proof of concept, we would have to narrow it so we focused on only one element of climate change, flooding, and aimed to create a methodology that could be easily replicated for other climate factors and across all TfL assets. The first thing we did was to do a brainstorming session in order to evaluate possible data sources, which included TfL data, climate data, and how that data should be categorized and processed. This included separating out different climate elements, including flood, rain, temperature, snow and ice. We then drew up a simple data flow diagram to give us an idea of how these items should be processed against climate models and how it should be evaluated for risk analysis and reported to end users. For this project, we decided to evaluate a single element, flooding. This meant the team needed to work out a way of being able to collect this data from future assets added to the TfL network. The initial idea was to start with a Microsoft form to collect this data from engineers when the asset was installed. There were other methods such as power-ups which we moved on to create a more robust data collection method. Collecting this asset information then gave the team some initial data to work with. Using the data entered by the, en data entered by the engineers into the form along with the environmental data such as local flood level data. The team were able to create a model to show the allow the vulnerability ratings data inputted in the form versus local level flood level data to work out rugby for each asset. To take this another step forward we were able to look at the assets over a period of a future 20 years. Looking at the risks to this asset over time and the impact climate change would have on this asset. We use PowerApps as our data collection method. The app allows users to view the existing data on TfL assets, update and edit the data as required, and upload new records. Our aim with the app was to be simple to use, whilst maintaining basic functionality such as search features. The data records have been kept to a minimum, however, this will need to be scaled up as the product is, and we have defined some of the metrics for assessing resilience through the app. The data collected here is used to generate several reporting dashboards. The first dashboard we generated shows the vulnerability of the assets against flooding risks with a RAG rating against each asset and the highest risk assets plotted on a map. This shows TfL the current risk to their assets, demonstrating the base risk. The second report is showing the overall flood risk to assets over a period of 50 years, highlighting the number of assets at high risk. We expect this report could be used to help build investment business cases by showing how environmental changes can increase the cost risk to TfL over time. The final dashboard highlights the assets which are most at risk to climate change by analysing how their risk changes over time in line with the environmental model. This is key report to answering the problem statement as it focuses on the changing picture for the years ahead and flags those assets which although are currently okay will require work if they are to remain operational in future climates. Several items to consider for future projects and improvements include using historical data for past extreme weather events to evaluate the resilience of TfL assets, including a gap analysis. Collect additional environmental data to widen the analysis of climate impacts. Improve the data collection app to improve user experience and data quality. Improve the dashboard to give different categories of users answers to their so what questions and productionize the data flow with robust data storage to improve data quality. Question one, how will you ensure your solution is adopted across the organization? 
It is important to communicate the purpose of the project so users can have a buy-in, that they understand that the project is to improve the resilience of the system. Training another important component allows users to report asset evaluation and allow business analysis Our methodology was designed to be scalable, allowing us to include further environmental factors to fully assess the resilience of the assets. So to scale our solution, to consider these other environmental impacts, we would use publicly available environmental data sets, such as those provided by the Met Office and the UK government, like of which we investigated to find the flooding data used in the challenge. We would also utilize different climate models that are also publicly available and provide data for different levels of warming. We would also build out our assessment criteria to evaluate the resilience of assets to these different factors. This would need to be done with TFL subject matter experts, and we know they already track data on criteria such as ambient air temps, which can cause some of their systems to fail when they reach a certain threshold. Question three. The way in which we thought about how we can make the solution more robust. Creating a secure database for storage of data, such as SQL, rather than Excel. Creating an automation to allow for the data from the collection tool to feed through to populate the dashboard without manual intervention. In the collection tool, rather than allowing free text input, using pick list to create a fixed number of responses. And finally, within the collection tool, giving end users more help, guidance or instructions of how to use the tool, rather than to having to look elsewhere.